Good morning. Uh, my name is Ricardo Fontes Carvalho from Portugal, and I'm here representing the EAC Cardiologists of Tomorrow. Uh, it's, we, are, we would like to welcome you to this Cardio Stars program, which consists of a series of TV interviews to world famous cardiologists about their lives, their careers, and the future of uh, cardiology. It is my pleasure to, uh, to welcome here Professor Stine Dalby Christensen from Denmark. Um, Professor Christensen um, is an interventional cardiologist. He is professor and consultant cardiologist at Harrows University in, at Denmark. He has been the past chair of the working group on thrombosis. He had several places within the ESC, including he will be the he is the elected uh, treasurer of the ESC. So I would like to welcome you here, Professor. Um, Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to have you here. And uh, my first question would be, um, it is quite clear from your career uh, that uh, you love cardiology, you love cardiovascular research. Um, my question is, why, why did you decide to go to medicine and why did you decide to choose cardiology afterwards? Well, when I started medicine, I was only 18 years old, and uh, I was from a family where there was not really an academic tradition. But I thought that medicine uh, looked very exciting. Uh, I think at that time where I was, I was not so focused, I thought that medicine would be great in the way that there are so many possibilities. Uh, then, uh, quite early actually, I went into research on, on clotting and platelets. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I had a clinical job in cardiology, and I found this amazing. And in particular, seeing at that time many patients with clotting in the coronary arteries, myocardial infarction, they mm -hmm. did not do very well. And we didn't have a lot of therapy. This was in the beginning of the 80s. Mm -hmm. So I think this was a motivation to go and choose a cardiology. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, it is quite interesting to see that uh, you were born in Haros. You graduated in uh, Haros University and you still work in, uh, in Haros. Uh, but you have been... Um, uh, abroad, you have been in King's College in uh, in London. My question is, um, what were the biggest uh, experience, the biggest things that you brought to your career from this abroad experience? And what is your advice to the young cardiologists about going abroad, going to other countries? Yeah, I think it, it is right. It looks as if I've been in office all the time, but but actually this is not the case. Uh, I have been training in other places uh, in uh, in Denmark and uh, also I had the privilege when I was around 30 to get a research grant uh, to go to England uh, to work there for almost two years and I worked first in Sheffield and then later on in London uh, with uh, Professor John Martin who uh, was a big uh, uh, let me say, uh, inspiration for me in many ways in my life. Uh, John actually is, had received the gold medal of, this, uh, of the ESC. And, uh, and when we worked together in Sheffield and in London, he was really giving me a lot of inspiration, not only in the platelet field where we worked and did a lot of interesting research, but also uh, he brought me an international view which I didn't have when I was in Denmark, because at that time in Denmark, I would not say that we were isolated, but it was not so usual to travel as it is today. Mm -hmm. So I think this change to go to a big country like the UK, with a lot of facilities in the beginning or mid 80s, was really uh, a very important uh, thing for me and for my career development. And uh, I think also that's where my interest in international collaboration also uh, started. So clearly an advice to uh, young cardiologists uh, is to try to work uh, in different places uh, in the world, um, in the States, uh, in UK, but also in many, many other European countries where there now are very, very good clinical and research uh, facilities uh, in the bigger countries. So I think it's something where you can develop your clinical profile, you can develop your research, but also your personality, because it's always nice to work with people from other countries. Yeah, I agree. Um, your main research interest, as you said, is thrombosis. Actually, in the last uh, five years, we have seen a complete revolution in uh, antiplatelet and anticoagulant therapy. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, Looking to the future, what do you expect from this uh, field? What will be the next developments? What is the future in antithrombosis? 
I think it's important to realize that these uh, great uh, changes that we have had to, and uh, new, new drugs that really are good are really dependent also on, on more basic research, that we understand the pathophysiology uh, of, uh, of the disease and how we can, uh, let's say, block clotting in the best way without getting too much bleeding. And I think it's important that we do more research also at the basic level, and then eventually I hope that this can turn into a more personalized, a personalized approach for our patients, because I think it's, it's obvious that uh, in the future, we should probably treat some patients in, in different ways regarding whether they are big or small or their age and sex and, and also comorbidities. Yeah. So I think this is, this is the way to go. Okay. Um, as I said, you do research, you do interventional cardiologists, uh, you do, we have several places, political and scientific, within the European Society of, of Cardiology. Uh, my question is, uh, from all these activities, which one pleases you the most? And if you agree with that saying that it is important not to have all the eggs in the same basket, what is your opinion? I think that's a, that's a very tough question. And I think to have been working in so many different fields, uh, is both an advantage and a disadvantage. I think you know you can probably become a better scientist if you really concentrate totally uh, on science. But for me, I think uh, probably I'm not excellent at anything, but I'm pretty good at most of it, and that's also where I find pleasure and fun. And I think this is also very important that you have, uh, for example, I love just like to work with regular patients. I think this gives me great pleasure and I think it is important and I would not be too happy to give up this. But of course, then there are times in your life where you get the possibility of, of taking up challenges like uh, in the European Society of Cardiology and get important uh, posts there. And then of course you'll have to give this a very high priority. Okay. Um, also, with all these professional activities, I probably think that it will be possibly difficult to find a right balance between work and life, I would say. How do you find that balance? Um, what are your advices also for the younger ones? Well, for me, I think the most important thing always has been my family. So I think you would need really to give your family the highest priority. Then when you look through your life and your career, of course there has been time where the family has been very, let's say, important and, and also time consuming, if you can use that word, if you have small children or if you have particular problems uh, in the family with illness. But I think uh, the family should go first and then my, uh, I'm trying to find a balance then between work and also some activities that I like to do in my spare time, like, mm -hmm. like sports and cooking and wine. And I think that's probably where I sometimes have difficulties in giving this priority. I think family and friends have high priority, and then yourself and your personal interest without medicine is sometimes difficult to find time for that. I, I should do more sports, clearly. I know that you have a, a philosophy of um, sometimes stop to think uh, to think about the future and the career. Uh, is that true? Yes, it's, I think it is important to have, to have breaks, to maybe totally off uh, and go somewhere uh, with your family uh, to rest for a while. But I would say now, even nowadays, it's difficult not to be on the email every day. <laughs> because if you do this for too long, yeah. Ricardo, when you come back, there'll be so many emails that it will, it will be very difficult to handle. So the balance now is that when I be on holiday skiing, for example, yeah. I would usually spend half an hour, an hour every day on, on my mail still. But I think doing things with your family and friends uh, is clearly very important. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, Stin, uh, one of the final questions. Um, you were a big supporter of, uh, uh, of the young cardiologists, of involving the young cardiologists within the AC. And we can say that you are one of the fathers of the ESC Cardiologists of Tomorrow. How have you seen this project in the last couple of, year, of years? And what do you think that uh, the, the young cardiologists can in the future give to the society and vice versa? 
Yeah, it's true that when I was vice president, this was actually one of the activities that we started. Uh, and uh, it was something that developed from personal experience because in Denmark, we actually had a very good association of young cardiologists. And at one stage, believe it or not, I was actually chairing it oh, yeah. around uh, 20 years ago nice. or so. So this was an inspiration that I thought we could use also at the ESC level. And actually, there was very good support from the ESC leadership at that time. Mm -hmm. So we started this uh, Cardiologist of Tomorrow, uh, uh, not only the track at the Congress, but also the important, uh, let me say, liaison between the associations of young cardiologists in the national societies. Mm -hmm. And I'm really I'm very impressed by what you have been doing. And I think this Congress also clearly shows that this was the right thing. Because, of course, we need to have the young faces uh, inside. We need to be inspired by, by the youth. And, you know, at one stage, uh, we would have to be, uh, there would be a change, you know. You will be in this seat, and I will not no. be in any seat anymore. And this is how it should be, I think. It's more the other way around. We get your inspiration from you. Um, the, to conclude, my final question would be, from your career, um, if you had to say something to the young cardiologists, what would be the biggest advice that you would give them for their career in, uh, in cardiology? I think first of all, as a cardiologist, and I know this sounds a bit old-fashioned, you have to realize that there's a lot of work. And if you want to have an easy job, you should not do cardiology. Yeah. Then when you've decided to do cardiology, I think it is very important early to get uh, access or the possibility of do research because uh, that's the way to go for, for all of us uh, in the advanced uh, uh, field to try and join a team, a group uh, of researchers that are doing something that you think is interesting. Learn from that, develop, get involved in uh, activities like uh, the cardiologist uh, or tomorrow or the national mm -hmm. uh, young cardiologist group and then try to really uh, also work uh, international. I think that uh, has given me a lot of pleasure and I think uh, it, uh, that will be very rewarding if you choose this way. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Sin. you too. Thank you for this thank magnificent you. interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.